All right, good morning, everyone. Today it's Monday morning, 7.30. It's time for a little dose of mojo. Thank you for being here. I'm excited to chat with you this morning. I know that uh, we are more than likely planning a great week, right? Why would we plan anything other than a great week? Uh, and I trust that you had a good weekend and you feel rested. And so I wanted to talk to you this morning about your productivity and what you might be thinking about in terms of your intentions for the week. So if you can grab paper and pen, I think I can give you some things to um, help you to maximize your time and increase your productivity, right? Which is something that I'm sure all of us are looking to accomplish. And I mean, let's face it, time management is probably the one thing that we all would love to master. And uh, let's be honest, it's really probably not rocket science, right? Yet, why is it so challenging for us to get the most out of our day, right? And how often do you find yourself saying, if I only had more time? And, and here's the thing, we all basically have the same amount of time, right? For us to accomplish whatever it is that we're looking to do throughout the day, the week, the month. And so I wanted to share some thoughts this morning with you that might help you to manage your time. Um, well, I'll say manage your time, I'll do it this way. Uh, and for you to really increase your productivity. So the first thing that I would, I would encourage you to do is get clear about your intentions, right? And so what are your goals? What is it that you really want to accomplish and why? Why is that important to you? And so for a lot of us, we might be looking at chipping away at a bigger goal, like a yearly goal, a monthly goal. Uh, and it's really important for us to have that in front of us. Right. So do you have your goals written down? Is it something that you look at regularly? Because when you can put your mind to something, your mind can kick in and help you get there. So if your brain is not seeing the goal often, is it really able to help you strategically focus on ways to get there? So I'm going to I'm going to just tell you guys this morning, this is going to be simple stuff. This is simple stuff. It's easy stuff. And I doubt you're going to hear too many things you haven't heard before. The challenge is, where do we fall short in execution? Where do we fall short in terms of creating habits around these, these principles and these ideas? So we'll, we'll get into that in a minute, too. All right. So the first thing, get clear about what it is you're here to accomplish. What is the goal? What is the intention? Chunk it down so that it is really in a bite-sized little package so that you can get clear about what those 20% activities are. So what am I talking about when I refer to it as a 20% activity? Well, I'm referring to the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule, which basically helps us understand that there is a predictable imbalance to the world <laughs> at large. So in other words, when we bring that 80-20 principle into the perspective of productivity and getting things done, what the Pareto principle helps us understand is that there is a small or short list of things that when we put our attention to that will bring us maximum results. That if you look at your, let's say, to-do list or your plan for the week as a whole, that only 20% of those activities are really going to bring you 80% of your results. Now, this is a this is counterintuitive. Okay. This is this is something that a lot of people want to fight because they want to convince themselves and anyone who's here to listen that there's way more than just two or three things that they need to focus on this week. And I understand that. And what we're really getting into is knowing the difference between your priorities, right? So yes, there are a lot of things that we have to do in a day or a week, yet when we get really, really clear about our priorities and how that lines up with our goals, we all have to acknowledge that there's just a few things that if we were to put our energy on that, would bring us the results that we're looking for. So if I bring that into your business, um, your, your career, many of us who are in a 
in a sales driven business, customer oriented business, if we're the drivers of that business, if we're uh, on the forefront of driving business development and sales and customer retention, then we would probably have to agree that there's nothing more important than lead generation and customer relationships. Because if we don't put that as a priority, will the other things that we say we need to do even become important? If I don't have a client to service, does it matter if I do any kind of research on the market or create systems if I have no way to you know, initialize those systems or use them to grow my business or to take care of the customers who come into my business, right? So, so for many of us, prospect and lead generation, that's got to be a number one priority. That's got to be in our 20%. And yet, do we spend that, that time on it? Do we dedicate those, those first hours of our, our prime time to really spending on, on generating new business, right? So what are your 20% activities? If you look back at your goals, what are the activities that if you were to focus on them consistently would produce the results that you're looking for, right? It's going to be a little different for some of us. So identify that right now, if you can, jot it down. What are the one or two things that if you were to put consistent energy and effort into, and more importantly, time blocked, time blocked time for it, it would produce incredible results that would move you to, closer to your goals. So the other activities, <clears throat> the 80% activities, I just want to tell you that when you focus on your 20%, a lot of the stuff in the 80% is going to become less important, maybe even not essential. Because what you're generating in terms of those, the, the results that you're generating from those 20% activities, you're going to find that that's going to create solutions. It's going to create opportunity. It's going to alleviate some things so that your 80% stuff becomes way less important or, or you'll hire someone else to take care of it. Because oftentimes what's in my 80% becomes someone else's 20%. That's how you leverage yourself, right? So when you look at your team, when you look at your staff, you know, if you, if you have a staff that is really working in their own lane, then together you're taking care of, of the bigger priorities of the company. So know your goals, write them down, keep them in front of you. Your brain needs to focus on them. Your brain needs to see it so that it can stay connected to the behavior that is necessary to execute on the strategy to get you to your goal. And know what your priorities are, right? Know that there is this predictable imbalance to, to activities, to the way that we look at life. Not everything can be important because if everything were important, you would get nothing done. Right, Gary Keller in the One Thing book, he talks about what happens if you try to chase two rabbits, you ultimately catch nothing, right? Because we have to know where our attention needs to be. And again, I get it. It's simple, but it's not easy. And a lot of this is counterintuitive. Now, another thing that I alluded to that is going to really help you master your week, right? And these are tips that you can start today, right? So you can make a decision that is this week going to be a week of chaos and confusion, even though no one sets out to say that our week one is going to be chaos and confusion, we, we, we have to ask ourselves by Wednesday, what is, what is the energy I'm feeling? So is your intention to have your week be chaotic and confusing, or is your intention for the week to be about getting the most out of your time and for you to see results? And specifically, what are those results that you're looking? So when you get to Friday uh, at three o'clock and you turn around and look at the rest of the week that you just spent, what are the results that you want to say you've accomplished? Whether it be in your career, your business, in your personal life, whatever it is, write it down right now. And a mechanism for getting there is, is really looking at how you set up your time, right? How you control your calendar. So again, not, not new material for a lot of you. You know this. It's called time blocking. What is time blocking? It's designating a specific amount of time or a block of time for a particular activity. You're all capable of doing this because you make appointments, right? 
to meet someone and you know that you have to meet that person at 1 p.m. and you show up at 1 p.m. and you meet with that person from 1 to 2 or whatever time you set aside. You show up for the things that you want to, right? The things that you have committed to. And so time blocking has to go further than just setting up time for appointments. Time blocking is where you can designate time for yourself to get things done. So if I use my example from a few minutes ago and we say lead generation is a priority, lead generation is one of those 20% activities. Okay, awesome. Go to your calendar right now and, and set time aside, time block time for you to get into your lead generation activities each and every day. Because that is how you'll know that you're getting it done. I know we all have great intentions. I know we can tell ourselves that lead generation, if, if that's the example, you fill in the blank with whatever your example is of your 20% activity. But if lead generation is that, that priority, we know that if we can focus on prospecting and, and reaching out to our database and making connections, that, that that builds momentum over time to produce business, we know that is true, then why aren't we setting time aside to spend on that activity? Rather than just approaching it as, I know, I know, I do it all the time, you know, and I'm going to get to that today. It's not the same as having that appointment with yourself for that activity. And then once you set that time block aside, I want you to also then get prepared, right? So you may have to block preparation time and know exactly how you're going to spend that time. Don't waste your lead gen time looking in your database and figuring out who you're going to call or, or, or organizing your notes from the last time you did this or whatever stuff we get into. Have a plan. And that's another, um, I would say, tool right, for you in terms of increasing your productivity and maximizing your results is do you have planning time set aside on your calendar with yourself. John Maxwell talks about this all the time. Time to plan, time to reflect. Two different time blocks on your calendar. Time to plan. When I uh, take the time to plan out my week, I have a much more productive week. I set intentions around the things I need to get done. It's different than creating a to-do list. This is not just mind dumping a big laundry list. This is about creating a plan for the things I want to get done because it's going to move the needle and get me closer to success, right? Get me closer to my goals. So I make a plan and I list out those big rocks, right? Those big things, those 20% activities that I need to get done this week. And then I go to my calendar and I block out the time for it. So I, I personally have a very time block calendar. Uh, people who are on my team, uh, people who work with me know that if they miss a time slot with me, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to spend time with you today because I'm very time blocked. Now, someone I know listening to this is saying, oh my gosh, I don't want to work that way. All right. So here's, my, here's the thing, my friends. I'm very time blocked and I do, I do put in some time to do things that I love, like this conversation with you every Monday. I do put in time for me to connect with people, for me to plan, for me to reflect. And I have really big goals, really big goals. So the bigger the goals, the more discipline you need to be with your time. And I have found that over these last several years, as I've become more committed to my calendar, more committed to time blocking uh, and getting better, not perfect, but getting better at using my time wisely, I've been able to really create some amazing things and have some, some wonderful outcomes from that. And it has given me freedom. Write that down. The more time blocked you are, the more freedom you create because I'm not wasting time. I'm not idle with my time. And so if I can get through the day and get things done, I'm the person who can go take four or five vacations a year. I'm the person who can go away for a long weekend. I'm the person who go out to dinner with friends and family and enjoy my, my social time. I'm not going to be burning the candle at both ends, not on a regular basis. You know, I may, I may decide to put a little extra time in on projects just like everyone else. But for the most part, I've created so much freedom in my life. I'm leveraged. Right. Because, again, I've built a team around me that knows we all know what we have to accomplish. So my 20 percent is my focus and all the other things become someone else's focus. 
Now you might be listening to this saying, that sounds great, but I work on my own. I'm a solopreneur. I get it. I've been that, I've been that person too for many years. So here's where, where you have to get strategic. Um, whether or not you're in a position to hire, make a hire if you can, then the first person I would hire is someone who can help you with tasks, right? Who's either an administrative person or an operations person, someone who's really good at the things that maybe you're not naturally good at. And of course, if you have any questions on that, I'm always available if you want to reach out to me and, and chat about it. Um, and, or you may want to look at how to leverage your time differently. If you're not looking to actually hire someone who's going to be a, an employee of yours, perhaps you build a team in other ways, right? You hire a bookkeeper, you hire someone who can, um, you know, that you can pay to do some kind of marketing or advertising for you, right? So you, you hire vendors, you hire trained professionals who become part of your team. You may even leverage yourself more in your personal life, right? You may hire someone who can clean your house and do your lawn. And, you know, I, I became leveraged in a lot of those areas many years ago because, you know, as you do this, you get really clear about what your time is worth. And so I know that my time is, is worth more if I invested in growing businesses uh, or with my family. And so I can now, you know, look at hiring other people to do certain things for me that, that is giving them an opportunity to grow their business, right? Uh, even ordering my groceries, you know, I, I've gotten to a point where I can I can see that whatever fee it might cost me to have someone shop for me and deliver my groceries, again, is an investment in my time. So some of those things, you know, you may have to work yourself to that point, um, but, but these are just ideas to help you leverage yourself because we, we can have it all, but we can't do it all. We just can't. And so when you think about the amount of time you have in the day, how do you use your time not just wisely, but to create maximum impact, right? And the only way you'll know if you're creating maximum impact is again, if you're clear about your goals and what those outcomes need to be from the goals, right? Because then you get clearer and you get better at setting priorities and knowing what activities line up with that. Okay, so we just um, talked a little bit about, and it kind of went off on a, on a little bit of a tangent, but we were talking about Having time set aside on your calendar for planning, right? So you get clear about how to use your time. So on a Sunday, are you sitting down and planning out your week or Monday morning, right? Before you get into your activities, that's the key. Because once you get started, the day takes off and some of us are, are chasing the day, right? Which is another reason why I got really intentional. And I've been asked many times, and I've thought about changing the time of this call. But for me, this is a time of day that I can support you and have, have this time at 7.30 in the morning that doesn't get in the way of everything else that's going on. And, and it gives us all an opportunity to start our Monday in this, this mindset, right? Before the day gets going. So for me, 7.30 in a Monday morning just is perfect to create a conversation around your mojo, right? So, so looking at that, when should you be planning your week? Some people like to plan on a Sunday evening. Some people like to plan on Monday morning. Some like to plan on Friday afternoon as the week is, is wrapping up and you're fresh in your mind, fresh in your mind what you just came off of this week. Maybe that's when you want to plan starting for Monday, but that's up to you. But have planning time. You may want to take a few minutes at the end of every day and get really micro about it and do some planning time for the next day. Another thing John Maxwell teaches besides planning time is time for reflection. So if you could take a minute, <clears throat> five minutes at the end of every day, just, just work with me for a second. Think about this. If you could take some time at the end of every day, five minutes, and reflect on what went well today, what was challenging and why, and what would you have done differently or what you need to do tomorrow based on what happened today, how much more effective could you become? How much more effective could you be at managing your time? So reflection time is huge. Then you could build in a little bit longer period of time to reflect on the week. Same, same premise, right? Reflect on the month, reflect on the quarter, and reflect on your year. 
as you become more intentional with your thinking, you're able to become more strategic. You're able to think logically rather than act emotionally, right? Because that's the key. We want to act, we want to act with some sense of purpose and logic, not just uh, respond and react emotionally, because that's the key to being productive rather than busy, right? Notice I'm saying we want to have a productive week, not a busy week. You don't need any help in creating a busy week. The world will do that for you if you let it, right? But what is the difference between being busy and productive? Well, I always say with busyness, don't mistake movement for productivity or action, right? Just because you're moving and you're busy and you're always on the go doesn't necessarily mean you're making any progress towards any specific goal. The key with with what productive is or productivity is, is that it's the activities that move the needle, that get you to that goal. And, and I don't like to say a finish line because when you get to your goal, you get to, to choose another goal. So that's how we build on success. That's how we build on success. So again, none of this is necessarily rocket science, yet do we all need the reminders, right? We're, we're, at, we're wrapping up the first quarter and we are looking at Q2 now. And so as this year is ticking away, how do you want to make your mark on 2022? What are the things that you want to accomplish? So a couple more tips before we wrap up this morning. I'm going to encourage you to create self-imposed deadlines, self-imposed deadlines. I'm a big fan of how much by when right? How much by when? So whatever it is that you're looking to accomplish, get done, succeed at, wonderful. What's the deadline? Because without the deadline, right? Without the, without the deadline, can we create the right sense of urgency? Without the, the deadline, can we really get super strategic and use our time wisely if there's no pressure? You know, and I, I find it interesting. Some of us are a little averse to pressure. I'm just going to say no pressure, no diamond, my love. No pressure, no diamond. So sometimes a little pressure is good. We're not talking about toxic stress. We're not talking about creating, you know, anxiety. We're not talking about, you know, trying to, you know, compete with, with whatever, it, it, none of that stuff. I'm talking about simple, simple pressure that says, I need to get this done by this day, right? Because without that, will you work at your optimum level? I, I know personally, I won't, right? Because I'll just keep telling myself because I'm such an optimistic person, it's the truth. I'll just keep telling myself I've got plenty of time, right? I, I mean, I was that person who did her report at the 11th hour, right? And so I have to know I have a deadline so I can work backwards from the deadline. And here's the thing, I'm not unusual. I think that's how most people can operate at a more optimum level. If, if we're talking about you know, the, the habits of highly successful people, you have to create urgency. And so if you can, you can self-impose a deadline, then you know how much by when you can work backwards from that and you're able to figure out exactly what your actions need to be on any day. Because without that, you may, you may find yourself not using your time wisely. Okay, so another thing that I'm going to add to this conversation before we run out of time this morning is remember uh, discernment, right? It's about knowing the difference between a decision and what the outcome will be. You may have to say no to some things. No is a complete sentence. Because again, if you're time blocked, if you're focused on getting to your goals, if you're focused on working in your 20%, there's no way that you can say yes to everything. I'm not here to tell you what to say yes to or what to say no to, but I'm here to tell you you can't say yes to everything. So you're going to have to choose where you put your time and what the result will be when you say yes to something or no to something. And some of the things that we can say no to might feel weird at first, but I will tell you that you will find that you will have an increase in your productivity because you're putting your, your attention where it needs to be. And the last tip this morning is I'm going to just talk to you for a minute about multitasking. You are not a rock star if you tell yourself that you're, you're a great multitasker. 
I'm just here to break that news to you. This was some buzzword that became popular. I don't know when. Uh, and a lot of us were led to believe that this made us, you know, a, a highly marketable person, that companies would want us because we can multitask, that we are the person you want on your team because we can multitask. Multitasking is a myth. And this does not help you to become more successful because you can't really give 100% to more than one thing at a time. So if you're telling yourself that you're this great multitasker, you're basically admitting to the world that you're not as efficient as someone who is time blocked and can say, I focus on one thing at a time. Because when you focus on one thing at a time, you give it 100%, you're much more efficient, you're much more productive, you can probably get through the activity faster and see better results than the person who's trying to juggle so much. So I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to let yourselves off the hook. And I want you to relearn that multitasking is not helping you succeed at a high level. It is not helping you to be more efficient. It's not helping you get the results that you look that you think you're looking for because your attention is divided and therefore you can't give everything 100%. So I would much rather, and if you really got, got really honest with yourself and audited how you spend your time, you'll find that your multitasking actually makes you less and less efficient and it's taking you longer to get through the day. And you're the one that's probably working overtime and weekends to try to catch up. And it's really not helping you to be a rock star, as I said. So multitasking is a myth. It's about time blocking, staying focused on one activity at a time. So I ran through a lot of tips this morning with you about using your time more efficiently, becoming more productive, getting clearer about how to, um, and, I, and I was saying earlier to you, manage your time. And I say that because time should be in quotes because it's not about managing time. I'm gonna end on this. It is not about managing time. Feel free to use the chat uh, for comments or questions. It is about managing your behavior. It's about managing your behavior. I can't manage time. The clock is ticking. The day is going. There's 24 hours in a day. There's seven days in a week. You know, there's so many weeks in a month and we have 365 days a year. I can't manage time. I can only manage my behavior and how I choose to use the time available to me. That is where I can become more empowered. So I'm going to challenge you to stop saying I need to manage my time. And I'm going to challenge you to say I need to manage my behavior and how I use my time. So I'm Anna Gibbs. It's Monday Morning Mojo. I trust you found exactly what you need to hear this morning. Let me know what that is on a chat uh, on the Facebook page. Send me a private message. You can email me to uh, my phone number is 845-649-1055. Text me, call me if you have questions. If you're looking for ways to help yourself move the needle and be more um, efficient and more productive this year. Just reach out. I'd be happy to talk to you about what that could look like or coaching. Um, you know, I want to help you live your best life and get the results that you need. So thanks for being here again every Monday morning. And if you find value in this, please share this with your friends. Um, we love seeing the Facebook community continue to grow and, uh, you know, let them know that they can find all the videos and all the Monday morning um, Mojo recordings, not only on the Facebook, Facebook page, but also on my YouTube channel. Thank you, everyone. Have a super productive week. Go out there and make it happen. Thank you.